guys and welcome to my channel here at Dragonairs Club. I hope everybody's having a really lovely week so far. So what we're going to be doing in today's video is actually a mega tarantula sling unboxing. I don't know how many tarantula slings there are, I haven't actually counted, but there's a number of different species ranging from terrestrial, arboreal, there's some dwarf species as well. So we're going to be unboxing them, we're going to be housing a couple of them, show you a lot of like the setups and things. It's very very basic with them being slings. Um, but as they grow and progress, we will move them on into like more um, exciting looking enclosures and whatnot. But I always do basic to start off because you just want to make sure that they're thriving well and molting correctly and eating and all those sorts of important things. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. And then what I also wanted to mention that I forgot in the last video, the Turinopelma Sazima tarantula that we rehoused um, doesn't actually have a name. So... I'm going to ask you guys to name that tarantula for me. Um, bonus points if it's anything Marvel related. I love Marvel. I love anything to do with space. I'm constantly looking at like um, different stars and comets and whatnot, trying to find um, inspiration for different interesting names for my creatures. I um, also quite like Greek gods as well. So bonus points if the names that you suggest are anything related to that. Other than that guys, if you do really enjoy the content, please like and subscribe, really does mean a lot. It shows me I'm going in the right direction with the content and that you guys are actually enjoying what I'm putting out there. Um, other than that guys, let's get into today's video. Alright, so here we have one of many very exciting boxes from the spider shop, so we're going to go ahead and get that opened. Sorry, just got massively distracted there. One of my bearded dragons is... Um, actually about to lay her first infertile clutch of eggs so she's made like a massive burrow <laughs> and she just stopped and looked like she was starting to lay so just wanted to check um, but no no eggs yet anyway moving on so very exciting box and we're gonna crack on and get this opened okay <laughs> Oh my goodness me. Okay, so I think we've had a bit of an explosion in this box, unfortunately. Um, I think a lot of the mealworms have actually escaped. So there's mealworms literally over quite a lot of the, the cork bark. Great. Yay. So, yeah, I'm just gonna need, I'm gonna need to sort that out. But so I've ordered quite a bit of cork bark. One of the things I was sort of planning on doing, you can see Thea by the... <laughs> uh, so one of the things I was kind of planning on doing was rehousing the jumping spiders, but that's going to be a later video. I'm going to redo a lot of the houses, make it look very natural, and that's basically what I'm going to be doing with these. But that's for another time. I'm just going to take all these bits out of the box. What have we got here? Oh, great. So we have, oops, fruit flies. Excellent. So they're excellent for like tarantula slings and feed them these if they're absolutely tiny, like 0.5 centimeters. These work amazing. So I've got those. I also have like two very small baby jumping spiders at the moment as well. So kind of need those for them as well. Right. I'm just going to grab my mealworm box. I'm just going to tip these in to there. But It's all good. It's nothing we can't handle. That's uh, that's a, that's a job for later. Right. Okay. So let's get down to the uh, super exciting bit. This is the box of spiders. Oh, look! Another one. open the box and we have got so firstly we've got some blue bottle flies I need these actually for the jumping spiders <laughs> so we've got those for them we've also got a very cute it's come a little skull water bowl as well so we're putting that into one of our tarantulas houses kind of cool and then we've got the exciting bit so first one 
is the P. Columbia or the yellow blue bottle sling. And then we've got in this box the C. Salatus or the Peruvian dwarf tiger tarantula. And then last but not least, the Brachypelma Amelia, or the Mexican red leg sling as well. Yay, how exciting. So we're going to get these guys set up into their own little houses, um, which we'll do together. And then we'll do our big housing. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. And what we're going to do to set them We've got some cork bark to make a little house for them. Also using spider life substrate. And then I've also got some uh, damp sphagnum moss as well. So we're mixing that into the substrate. This is going to be very simple for these slings. Just so that, you know, we can better keep track of the progress as they're growing and making sure they're eating and shedding correctly pretty much exactly like as I've explained with the jumping spiders obviously we won't be using strings and things like we did for them but we're just going to keep this quite simplistic naturalistic but simplistic <laughs> cool. I don't want to sort of tap it down too much because a lot of slings do like to burrow, so make it quite easy for them to be nice and comfortable. Right, now we're going to make some little hides for them out of the cork bark. There are other things that you can do. You don't have to necessarily get tubs like this. If they're tiny, you can typically just keep them in these and um, just fill it about halfway with substrate. You might want to put some extra little teeny holes in, but just make sure they're not too big because you don't want the slings to obviously climb out. And that works quite well. All I'm gonna do is get some of my damp sphagnum moss. Just get a tiny little bit. Right, that's done. Oops. <laughs> what we're going to do is just simply start to rehouse the slings into their homes. Hopefully, this uh, goes relatively smoothly. I only had one so far that's actually bolted on me and scared the living daylights out of me, but we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, this goes smooth. Yeah. I'm just going to grab. A little paintbrush just in case. Trusty little paintbrush. And also, actually, I'll use this spare one as a catch cup in case the inevitable happens. Right. So, this here is actually a Davis Pentaloris, and this is one that we've. Uh, we received in the last unboxing and 
end, all I'm going to do is rehouse it from this into this because whereas this does have like cross ventilation and top side ventilation, it's just a massive pain in the arse to get the lid off. So we're just going to rehouse it if we can find it into one of those instead. See if we can actually see it first. Oh yeah, there it is. So you guys can see right in there. Davis Pentalaurus sling. Absolutely tiny. Right. What I need is a much thinner brush. Two. Tiny little tap on the bum. There we are. And all we're going to do is move it from that house into this house here. And very gently get it to the edge. There we go. Hopefully she'll just walk herself in, but I don't think she's gonna. There we go. And she's in a new home. Perfect. I'll just show you guys whilst she's up on the wood. There she is. Little Davis Pantalaurus sling. Now she'll probably run and hide. I'll sort the others out, pop in a few fruit flies and just leave these guys to settle and grow into beautiful strong spiders. And there we go. Okay, so next up we have the Brachypelma Amelia. And pop her into a house. Here she is. Okay. How cute. Absolutely adorable. Yeah, sweetie. Nice home for you. Boop. Little boop on the bum. There you go. And yeah, we're gonna. Oh, are you in? Yeah, we're gonna go straight in. Straight into a little house. Beautiful. Nice and straightforward. It's a bit stunning tea. Well, they all are, to be fair. I love tarantulas. <laughs> yeah. And next up is the Peruvian dwarf tiger. That's the Cicelatus, Cicelatus, and we will put you, because I think this one is going to be the tiniest of them all, so <laughs> uh, we'll give you this one. There we go. Just want to make sure you guys can see here. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how this one grows. Oh my gosh, so tiny. Wow. Hopefully, you guys can see, look how small that baby is. Absolutely tiny. Wow. You do not want to move. You mean stubborn. Stubborn. 
still in Ciliatus. Thank you. Come on. And there you go. Perfect. It's just on the edge of her house. I think we have a fair while before they, uh, they're gonna need rehousing. What do you guys think? <laughs> Alright, so that's the sea celiatus. So last but not least is the yellow blue ball sling. Another one that I'm very, very excited to own and watch grow. Oh, this, this looks exactly like the Mexican red leg sling. If you were to put these different slings together, you'd never know. You'd never know which ones were which. My goodness. <laughs> See what I mean? So this one has the yellow body with the blue bum, the yellow legs. Beautiful. Oh, and she's a runner. No, don't go burrowing in the tissue, please. No, we don't like that. No, it's not happening today. Come on. Uh, right in here. There she is. Yeah, cool. Alright, I'm going to leave these guys to it. Give them a bit of a spritz, give them some fruit flies, and then we're just going to leave them to... Do their own thing, get comfortable and grow. Perfect. Right, let's do this. Let's get one little teeny tiny pumpkin patch into her teeny weeny home. Beautiful, very, very cute. Please don't bolt because on this carpet, I don't honestly think I'll see you. <laughs> I'm literally using like one bristle hair right now to try and direct her. There she goes. There she goes, nice and gentle. Whoop, and a stylish little tumble. See how tiny she is? Right. Actually, what I'm also gonna do. Get a bit of light on the situation. <laughs> All right, let's see now. I'm gonna trust the old paintbrush ready as well, just in case. Just try and open this up without freaking her out, if possible. Actually, I'm just gonna do just in case. Tiniest of catch cups, but there we go. <laughs> These are tiny spiders, so it should be alright. Just in case. So you're just in there. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh. Alright, if you're gonna freak out, at least just go. I'm sorry, don't freak out. <laughs> there we go, alright. There we go. I'm sorry. Maybe a little leggies. Yo, something very exciting today. We've received a package. This is the package. Um, so this was actually a Christmas present from my partner, um, and inside is three beautiful spiders. Um, so I've already done homes for them. They are slings, so I'm hoping, I've not had these species before, so um, 
I'm hoping this will suffice. So let's open up and see what we've got. I've also got as well um, catch cups. That should be a nice surprise. <laughs> uh, hopefully we don't need to use them. But uh kind of gives you a, a hint as to exactly what is in this box. Just gonna use some scissors. And this package was from the spider shop. Yeah. Right. I'll focus. You can't really see her colours with her being so small. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be quite difficult to really see see her colours she's going to be a beautiful blue I'm just going to let her settle for a bit and then I'll get some more footage later but I just kind of want them to settle first what are we going to do? are you going to be able to you don't want to be trapping any feedies nah, that's fine cool here we go lots of peanuts and it's a box inside of a box <laughs> oh no peanuts everywhere and nice heat pack and inside ooh. We have one Carabina Versicolor sling. Very exciting. We have somewhere else the purple pink toe tarantula sling. And a green bottle blue. <laughs> We'll go with the green bottle blue. We'll start with that one. Because I think this one is supposed to be quite fast. So I think if we get this one sorted, then the others, famous last words, won't be such a challenge. I think. <laughs> right. Oh. Look at that baby. Teeny weeny. Stunning. So there's number one. I'll go for the second. All right, let's move on to the second one. So that was the green bottle blue sling. So let's move on to the Carabina Versicolor. Yeah. I really like this little house for it. Hopefully it does too. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. Hopefully, I don't think the light is just picking it up. Let's have a look. Where's my torch? Sorry, guys. All right, let me just shine a little light. Hopefully, you can sort of see the color. 
beautiful little blue colour. Mm. There you go. Well, I'm sorry, I freaked you out now, haven't I? There you go. There we are. Caribbean Versa colour. Mm. And finally, the purple pink toe. I think this one is probably going to end up being like one of my favourites for sure. I absolutely adore the purple colour. It's like a real deep purple. Mm, this one's a very slightly, slightly larger sling to the other two. I love like that striped pattern on the bum and these ones have but these ones do quite like to bolt so I'm going to be more careful with this one it's very difficult to pick up the actual colour that's her get her in Gently tap her on the bum. Hmm. She doesn't seem bothered at all. <laughs> she doesn't want to move. <laughs> Uh. Come on, sweetie. Literally. Mm. She is hunkered down. Not interested. Oh, there we go. Oh my god, that's so quickly they can go! Ah, oh, shit! Exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen happened, and that, I think that's the biggest scream I've let out in a very long time. That was a full on proper squeal. I panicked. Hands up, I panicked. Um, okay, so good thing is she didn't really go far <laughs> under the um, cabinet right here. So I literally just tapped her back into this direction with the paintbrush and got her into this box, and this is where we're at right now. Um, yeah, so this is her. <laughs> this is going to be the best way, I think, for me to show you. Because uh, she's freaking out a little bit and I'm freaking out a little bit. So, yeah. She's, like, hiding her little face right now. I still think she's adorable, even though she did absolutely make me just... Well, you know the words. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. We're just going to pop her now into a little house. I think inside this catch cup that is ginormous and I'm very thankful is here right now um, yeah I'm just gonna house her in her own house in the very large catch cub uh, let me just try and rehook you guys back up and hopefully you don't uh, <laughs> we don't witness scream number two all right what is the best way that I'm gonna be able to do this without everything falling to pieces. All right. Oh. 
But that is a good indication of exactly how fast these guys can move. My goodness me. I just, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still getting over the shock of it. And very gently. Every accidental movement is just causing her to like freak out a little bit. As soon as we got her into a house, she'll go up. And oh, there's a little lip there. All right, right. There we go. She's in. Sorted. Um. I'm just very happy we've got to this point at the moment so I'm just gonna cool down and <laughs> let her cool down and then we'll we'll get some more footage for you guys so um yeah BRB hello guys and welcome back um so I just thought this would be a really nice place to actually stop and just have a chat with you in regards to how I personally care for my tarantula slings what you'll tend to find is if you know if you're watching a lot of different content creators a lot of them do do things quite differently and i think there's a lot of variables involved for one is sort of like where you are in the world there's different enclosures available to you um substrates they tend to be quite different a lot of people will just mix up their own and that works perfectly fine but if you're looking to buy the pre-packaged stuff that can be quite there's a lot of different brands out there that are available um so it's just something to keep in mind. But we can discuss that later if that's something that you guys are interested in. I'm more than happy to go into a lot more depth of tarantulas. I love them and I find them fascinating. So more than willing to go into the nitty gritty with them. If that's something you guys would be interested in, please let me know. Drop it in the comments. Um, but yeah, so this is just going to be a very, very basic how I care for my tarantula slings. Um, and that's for a boreal and terrestrial species. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, hi you guys. So I've picked out a, a couple of different um, terrestrial and arboreal slings that I've got. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go through the different setups, show you how I've done it and why, um, and the benefits of certain enclosures that different ones are in as well. So the most unusual one that you probably won't see used very often, if at all, <laughs> is actually this one. So I've got my pumpkin patch sling in this, and this was a waxworms tub. Rest assured I don't feed waxworms to any of my creatures. I actually just wait for them to pupate and then they turn into moths and I feed those to my jumping spiders. Um, but this has actually worked really well because it's already ventilated, as you can see. It's got top ventilation right there. And then inside, because she's absolutely tiny, she's likely going to be in this for quite some time. All I've done it's just to keep the humidity up. These guys don't require as high humidity as certain other species. So all I simply do, put the sphagnum moss and just literally spritz lightly on top of it. And I'll do that, say, once every three days. And that's more than enough. So this girl, she's actually made her home right inside of this cork bark in here. And this is one of the different setups that I've got. Um... I'll come to that in a bit. So I'm not going to be able to show you her because she's very settled right inside. I think she's actually made a little, a tiny little tunnel underneath that cork bark. So she's nice and snug in there. She only literally comes out. The only way I know that she's there is literally by the food that I put in. So I'll either feed her fruit flies or I will pre-kill some micro crickets. And I'll just put a micro cricket pretty much at the entrance of her house. When it's gone, I know she's eaten it. Um, if for whatever reason she hasn't eaten it, she may well be sort of molting inside of there or she's just full. I give it maximum of like 24 tops, 48 hours. If it's not eaten, I'll remove it, give it a couple of days, put a fresh one in and leave it. And I just kind of repeat the cycle. Um, that's pretty much how I manage her. You'll have seen... Um, with the unboxing exactly how small this sling was. I mean, she was tiny So that's the pumpkin patch sling um, Then let's have a little look so this is another terrestrial species. This is the yellow bottle blue and as you can see hopefully 
Um, I have actually fed this one the flies, the fruit flies. There is one or two walking around in there. Um, she's got a couple of different homes that she's made in here actually. Sometimes she comes right out on top of the cork bark and just chill. Other times she's incredibly well hidden. So um, she's got the option. So she likes to nest most of the time inside of that moss actually. So I don't tend to spritz in there. Um, and she's also made a home under that cork bark as well. So it's 50-50 usually wherever she is. Um, in regards to spritzing her, I actually got, uh, just a quickly note, I actually got this, these little tubs. Um, just trying to think now. Yeah, I actually bought these from Timu. <laughs> it's quite useful as you can literally just flip the lid up like this. So it just minimizes the risk. Um, all of my slings are in these types of enclosures, well, apart from the pumpkin patch. All the other ones are all inside of these. And it's brilliant because you're minimalizing risk if you're using fruit flies of them escaping, for one. Um, and obviously if your sling is out, it's, there's less chance that it's just going to bolt, if it is a bolty species. Um, and then typically all I do to manage her in regards to misting, so... I do have a small mister, but it's got no water in it. Let me just pop some water in. Just close that so the flies don't escape. And just pop that up. And I typically mist in the areas where the slings don't tend to go. So it'll just be like in the corners somewhere. And maybe on top of the lid, anywhere like that, where they can still get to for a drink, but they're not at all at risk. Tarantulas have essentially gone through their juvenile stage up into adult. They develop a waxy substance on their um, exoskeletons, which protects them from things like water. Slings do not have that, so they tend to be quite sensitive to it. And if you soak them too much, they'll often just die so just something to be very very mindful of especially if you're a first time tarantula sling owner just be very mindful in regards to spritzing your tarantula slings enclosure with terrestrial species i tend to spritz them a lot less than i do arboreal species because they don't require as much humidity so with arboreal species typically you're looking around 70 to 80 percent humidity to keep them quite happy um with these guys, with terrestrials, you're looking more at like 60%. So you don't really, they, they don't require as much of a misting. And generally speaking, if the substrate just does dry out a bit, it's not an issue. Like, that's absolutely fine. So as you're sort of researching um, through different tarantulas, you'll tend to find that certain species can actually survive and th actually thrive absolutely fine in very damp high humidity sort of environments and they can also thrive in very dry environments as well um, but that's only certain species as always I'm always going to recommend that you do your research prior to buying any tarantula sling some are very very hardy some of them are a lot more delicate so just be very very careful all right so that's that's this one that was the yellow blue bottle so I'll move on now to the green bottle blue and I'd say personally, so the, so the green bottle blue is typically um, a terrestrial species of tarantula but I personally I would probably place a green bottle blue sort of on an in-between level between a terrestrial and an arboreal species. So yes they spend a lot of time sort of a ground level and they'll do the majority of their webbing there which is why they're typically classed as a terrestrial species. However you will notice if you do get one or if you already have one you probably have already noticed that they do also like to go quite high as well. So they do typically go to the top of the enclosure, they'll sit there, they'll web up there as well. So they do quite like to have a bit of height, so I think if you can accommodate that and just give them the option of being at ground and being at a higher level, they're probably going to be all the more happier for it. Green Bottle Blue typically is a species that does like to explore a bit more. Um, it's not such a shy species of tarantula, and they're also fantastic feeders as well. That's something else I've definitely found with this one. You pop it in, it'll go for it. 
And I'm just going to show you guys. So she's out at the moment. So I'm going to bring you down from here. Ooh. Right. So she's recently gone through a shed. So her last shed was two days ago. So I'm going to give it a couple of days. Um up to around about a week but we'll, we'll we'll discuss feeding in a second but i just want to show you guys the um enclosure that she's in so as you can see she's done the majority of her webbing right on the floor she's got a lovely web web floor right there oh, i've sort of said shedding um when i say shedding i actually mean molting <laughs> um but this is her enclosure so as you can see she's got plenty of area that she can actually climb up if she wants to and generally speaking she does tend to you can kind of see her webbing has gone right up to the top of the lid so that's just something to keep in mind I think a good indicator for uh, to, to essentially alert you to whether or not your sling may well be molting is if they're completely off their food and if say they haven't eaten in about a week and they're still just not really interested the likely reason is that they're probably going to molt very very soon um, and don't be alarmed if they do sort of molt, you want to give them a good week prior to trying to feed them again, because it, it takes a fair while for tarantula slings to re-harden, but a really good way to actually know whether or not your sling is ready for feeding is by actually looking at the fangs. So if a tarantula sling ha is showing white fangs, it is very difficult because obviously they're very small, so the fangs are going to be very small. But if you do find them sort of sitting on the edge of their enclosure, if the fangs are, are very white, you want to wait until the colour actually goes black. And that's a really good indicator that the skin has hardened quite nicely. And then you can start to think about reintroducing food. But typically I give it a good five to seven days before I even contemplate feeding my tarantula slings after a molt and they will be absolutely fine with that so that's her all right and moving on all right so the arboreal slings so i got my pink toe my purple pink toe right here my carabina versicolor right so as you can see i've set these ones up a fair bit different the key to note is with arboreal species, you don't have to put as much substrate in because typically they're, they're not a burrowing species. You don't tend to find that these will go under the ground. They're much more comfortable sitting on top of the ground and webbing upwards. With these guys, you kind of want to give them the ability to web inside of, say, a cork tube. And if you do, once they're comfortable, this is sort of what you end up with. So this is the purpurea. And so she's the one that gave me a lot of trouble in the beginning. She's the one that bolted. Every time I tried to feed her, she would bolt. She stressed me out a fair bit. <laughs> I think it's fair to say we probably stressed each other out a fair bit. Now that she's comfortable and she's made her tunnel, she's sat right at the bottom at the moment. Um, right inside there, you can only just about see her bum. She's made this beautiful, like, S-shaped uh, web tunnel right here. And she's now the easiest of all of my slings, I would say, to, to manage. It's so easy because she she doesn't come out too much. When she does, she maybe sits on the top of the cork bark. Um, as soon as I open the lid, she tends to kind of go back in, which is absolutely fine. So if I want to spritz her, I'll typically spritz in the areas where she isn't. And because she's typically never at the front, it just makes sense to spritz all up the front. She'll come out if she wants a drink, and that's about it, really. Um, when it comes to feeding her, all I literally need to do is just drop some food into her tunnel. She grabs it, done. She literally jumps on anything I put in there. Um, and I typically feed her about once a week. She'll get like a mealworm or a pre-killed cricket or... A a baby dubia roach um, but that's it pretty much very very easy but I think at the start of it it can be quite stressful um, with bolty species until they've settled once they're settled everything is fine but that first stage of getting them you'll find that they're kind of like doing laps almost around the top of the enclosure and they look very unsettled and it kind of makes you want to 
change up the enclosure and whatnot to try and suit them better, but just leave them alone because the more you fuss with these, well, with, with tarantulas in general, the more you try and fuss with them, the more you're just going to keep stressing them out. They won't settle, they won't eat, um, and it could just result in them dying. They're generally quite brittle, so just leave them to it. They'll figure it out. As long as you've got a place for them to hide where they can feel safe, they'll sort themselves out. So, best advice, less is definitely more in the tarantula in the tarantula world, I would say, especially when you're dealing with slings. The more complicated it is, the more risk there is. I would say care with the carabiner versicler is not actually too dissimilar to the purpurea. They both like quite high humidity, so I pretty much care for these two identically. They're both nicely settled in, so she's made a nice web all the way through that cork tube and all along sort of the underside as well of here so she's um she's definitely a lot more um adventurous let's say than the purple pink toe she likes to come out and whatnot other than that guys, if you have enjoyed the content of this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe as it really does help the channel. Hope you all have a wonderful evening and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!